Yeah, Coach, uh, just was looking at some numbers this morning. You guys are second in defensive rating, only behind Brooklyn. I know it's just four games. How much uh, are you looking into that number? We just want to continue to improve. Um, you know, it's too early to, to get caught up in that, but we do like where we are. Um, it's something that we feel like we can, you know, hang our hats on a number of number of our players have talked about it as far as, you know, our identity has to be on the defensive end. And, and we certainly want to, you know, be in this spot um, as the season progresses. Uh, as I told you guys last night, I mean, to me, you got to get to about 20 games to really know who you are, play a number of teams, some twice, um, gone through, the West and the East. And so it gives you a better idea of who you are. And just to follow up, you know, as far as the film, what what what'd you see? Is it pretty much what you saw last night or did you see some things that, that you feel like you can uh, obviously always improve upon? What did you see in the film? Well, the ball movement on offense was something that um, I think our guys are starting to see, especially the guys who come here and are new you know, how it helps us as a team, um, certainly allows us to get better shots, but it also has potential to, you know, move the defense around, sometimes wear guys out and, and also give you offensive rebounding opportunities. And then, you know, looking at the defense, um, the multiple effort, the, the helping, uh, we switched out on the shooters and, all that stuff was great, but the ability to, you know, take care of the paint and, and not give up a ton of offensive rebounds is something that we were looking at. And then on the film, you can see, you know, everybody boxing out. There was one clip where campaign had to box out Zion, uh, which is a tall, tall task. And he did a really good job. And, and then there was somebody behind him in case there was a long rebound. So th those are things that we have to continue to improve on. Um, and there's a number of other things we saw in the film that would make this way too lengthy. Next is Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports, followed by Gerald Bourget. Hey, Coach, I'm glad you mentioned the multiple efforts. That that really stood out watching back. Uh, there's this balance, it seems like, between effort on defense and still being in the right spot, like not being too reckless when you're making those multiple efforts. And it feels like you guys are – are really hitting that. Is, is that an accurate assessment or just what are you seeing in terms of the multiple effort uh, part specifically of the defense? Well, the, the first effort is, is just a sprint and turn mentality and transit. You know, if we can get back and form that wall, it allows for us to be in position to know what effort we need to implement. And so that, that's the first effort. And then the ability to just you know, cover up the paint so teams just can't continue to attack the paint and get rim shots. But once there's, you know, an action by the offense, our defense has to, you know, counter that with a scheme and great effort. And so that, that's what I saw last night. Um, we were in a, what we call a shift, but we were closing out the shooters with great intensity and running them off the line. Um, one time, Bledsoe shot a shot over the backboard last night. If you watch that possession, there were so many uh, multiple efforts, um, closeouts, and just staying in front of the ball. You know, he made a tough shot, but that, that was a great defensive possession for us. Next is Gerald Breguet with Fan Sided, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Coach. Uh, it looks like Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson have both been a lot more aggressive off the dribble with their, their drives to the basket and, and also their drive and kicks. How much more does that unlock within your offense when they're taking those steps as far as being ball handlers like that? Well, you know, I've stressed this for a while that we need somebody else from the, the wing position to step up and, and give us production. And those two guys have been in the gym all summer working on their shooting, but they've also been working on, you know, playing in point five and go catch. Um, so they can attack and, and get to the basket or find guys on the, on the weak side. So I think it's something that allows for us to, you know, 
have options on offense for sure. And then it doesn't allow for teams to just key on, on Devin. You know, that that's a big thing for us is like having guys that are threats on offense. And, and certainly Mikhail and Cam are growing into that. And next is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. Yeah, Coach, uh, I meant to, I've been meaning to ask you this for, for a few days. After the opener, um, Coach Carlisle, was, he was giving you guys, he was complimenting you guys play, but he also said it was it was agitating. And I, I, I'm assuming that means it, it's getting under another team's skin in terms of how you play. When you hear a coach basically saying, hey, look, you know, this style is bothersome. Uh, to play against, uh, I guess, what does that do for you as a, as a as a coach? I mean, you think about where it comes from. You know, Rick, Coach Carlisle's, if you guys did a poll, he'd be top five coaches in the league, you know, and I'm not that. So when you hear someone say something like that about the way you play, it's, it's good to hear, and it, it motivates you to, you know, to do it more and more and more. And... Um, you know, that, that's that's who we want to be. We want to be from day one when we met as a team. We said we want to be a team that's just relentless in everything that we do. And, and that requires you to go after people every night. And, and that's you know, not easy, but it's something that we feel like gives us a chance to, to have great success. So the, Dallas is ahead of us by all accounts. Uh, they're a playoff team. They're a team that some think can contend for a title. And so we can get under their skin and, and have um, an impact on winning. That, that's a good thing. And quickly to follow up, uh, you guys got obviously a back-to-back -back, uh, on the road, Utah and Denver, two other teams that, you know, are being considered uh, in that contending for a title, just the challenges of facing those two in a back-to-back -back situation. Well, it starts with just getting on the plane, getting a good night's rest, and approaching our shoot around tomorrow with a, a great level of, of professionalism um, and focus. You know, we can't get ahead of ourselves. The, the next right thing we have to do is, is preparation for Utah. Uh, <clears throat> they're a really good team. Uh, they handled us in the preseason in, in many areas of the game. And so that's the focus right now is um, how do we – you know, go up there and, and you know, keep them out of our paint, be much better in transition, keep those guys off the glass. And, um, you know, there's some things that we're going to you know, have to do if we're going to have success in this game. Uh, Devin, I uh, just wanted just to ask about uh, last night's game and, and what impressed you the most. I mean, considering you, you, and, you and Chris didn't put up numbers as far as scoring, but to be able to uh, have a win like that, be up at, be up by 40, win by 25. What do you think of the performance? Yeah, it was a it was a collective group effort. Uh, I think that's a big win for us, um, and very well played out um, from us. And show us what we're capable of um, when the ball doesn't stick and you know it's moving and everybody's touching it. And I think there's a couple of possessions where you know we didn't score on the first action, we didn't score on the second action. You know, he scored on the fourth or fifth action. And, you know, I think that's hard to guard, you know, for teams. You know, when you keep wearing them out, keep moving the ball like we were last night. And just just, just to, to, to follow up on, on that as far as the, uh, you talked about the offense, but you guys are second in the league in defensive rating. I think you're first in points allowed. Um, this was a team that was known for offense for years, but wasn't known for defense. How, how are you liking that look of, of you guys being seen as a defensive team? I mean, that's, you know, that's going to be the name of the game for us. Um, I think last night we showed what we're capable of on that offense end, but the defense is what's going to stand with us from game to game, um, whether if we're making shots or not, if we're generating perfect open looks for ourselves or not. Um, defense is what's going to, you know, get us to where we're trying to go every night. Um, and I think we have a very balanced defense, well-communicated defense. Um, and last night was a step in the right direction of, you know, communicating even more, rotating for each other even more. Um, and, and it looked well, it looked really well. Next is Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports, followed by Brendan Klain. 
Hey, Book. Uh, when Monty was asked about the defense, he brought up multiple efforts. Uh, you had a really great closeout and contest on Lonzo to close out a possession, and you had a handful of those possessions yourself last night. What have you been seeing from the group uh, just in terms of a change? Because even at, when you guys were defending well in the bubble, I don't think you guys reached quite this level where you were defending at this high of a rate. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a short sample size, three games. Um, I mean, we, we still want to build on it. But, you know, at the beginning of the season, I think you see, you know, our versatility, you know, at the wings with me, Mikel, and Jay in the starting unit. Um, and obviously, Chris, the how I many all, all defensive teams he has. Um, and DA, DA with us being the anchor and protecting the paint um, for us. You know, so I, I've always said, you know, defense is a team concept. You know, it's kind of hard to point out single defenders, especially on a, a bad defending team. Um, but when everybody's hitting on all cylinders, everybody's communicating with each other. And, you know, you have trust if you rotate for somebody that, you know, your teammate has your back. You know, I think that's what we're gaining right now. And, you know, like I said, last night was a prime example of that. Next is Brendan Clean with Bright Side of the Sun and then Gerald Bourget. Just to follow up on that book, um, you know, defensively, you guys added guys like Jay and Chris who are, I mean, all, all, all defense level guys, right? They have been that for their careers. Is it to you, do you feel like it's adding those guys and, and having the personnel that you guys have? Or are you doing anything differently on defense so far that you're kind of uh, happy about or that you've noticed is working better than last season or things like that? Um, you know, I'd say some teams have, you know, standard defenses that they play night to night. Um, but playoff basketball and basketball, you know, at highest level is, you know, communication. You know, it's reading, reacting, it's helping each other out. You know, it's not, you can't play every single team the, diff the same way and play every single player the same way. So, you know, learning to play tendencies, um, and having Jay and Chris, guys like that, that can, that can communicate those, know the guys that we're playing against um, very well. And, then, you know, we're all learning. So communication trumps everything. That's what we say. And, you know, we've been, a, do, been doing a very well job of talking to each other. Thank you. All right. Final two questions are Gerald Bourget with Fansided and then Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Book, with the point five offense, you know, having guys that can move the ball and make plays off the bounce is, is important. Um, and it seems like Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson have both taken steps in that regard this season so far. What have you seen from their playmaking and, and the way that they've been moving the ball and attacking off the dribble? Uh, yeah, I think the, the offense is, is very well balanced um, and, the, and the spacing um, is there. And when you have the threat of you know, multiple shooters, multiple people that can put the ball on the ground and multiple players that can make plays for each other, I think it's tough to guard. Um, you know, so we're in our correct spots, we're in our correct spacing. I think those driving lanes open up, which force teams in the rotation and, you know, give us the ability to, you know, take over 43s in the game. Um, but like I said, we're balanced. Um, and we can make adjustments if teams try to take away three from us. I think we have you know, multiple guys on this team that can make people pay at the rim and, you know, in the mid-range area also. All right, last one is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. Yeah, Dan, we're going to get you out of here with a, with a two-parter. One, um, the return of Dario, uh, you know, how, how nice was that? And, and two, uh, this, this road trip coming up, back-to-back, uh, -back, uh, Utah and Denver, just maybe speak to the challenge of, 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 of facing, of, of that, of, of, of that back-to-back. -back. Yeah, I mean, welcome back to Dario. Um, big piece that, you know, our, our, our team missed tremendously. So it's really nice to have him back. Um, just his versatility also, you know, is able to play our auto offense and play five out and him be the facilitator. You know, we can, we can play through Dario. He, he knows actions like he's a point guard. He can make reads and plays like that. Um, so he makes the offense and the spacing a, a lot a lot easier while he's out there. Um, and, you know, we know what's ahead of us. Um, I mean, we've we seen the schedule when it came out. You know, we know this isn't going to be easy. Two proven playoff teams, you know, on the road. Um, you know, but I think we took a step forward in the right direction last night. Um, 
we just had a good, good short practice, um, and we're ready for it. You know, so I think if we control, you know, what we, what we can control and worry about ourselves, that you know, we put ourselves in really good shape. Hey, Cameron, how how, uh, how nice was last night's win and, and guys, uh, you know, multiple guys getting double figures, uh, built a huge lead. Uh, the whole, you know, was that that the most complete game you guys have played so far this year? You think? Uh, yeah, it was it was big time, man. We all we all came and contributed. Uh, even even CP and Book, even though they didn't score a lot, they were big time contributors. Uh, getting getting everybody the ball. Uh, but I mean, I felt like we shot the ball well. We got the shots that we wanted, and biggest thing of all, we got a lot of stops. And just to follow that up, you just mentioned it. Uh, having that kind of effort in game with with Devin and and, and Chris not putting up numbers as far as scoring. Uh, how, how, how are you guys feeling about, does that give guys more confidence? I mean, that's what Monty was talking about after the game that should give other guys more confidence. You agree with that? Oh, for sure. Uh, but I feel like, man, we all, we all work hard to make those shots in the game. Uh, we always, you know what I'm saying, go over script and stuff to put ourselves in those positions to make those shots. And uh, I feel like everyone, um, everyone besides CP and Brook, I mean, I feel like we put in a, a lot of work. Uh, like Muncie say, he he gave a search at the beginning of the year. Reps were moved out, and uh, I feel like man, we uh, keep putting the work in, and everybody keep getting their opportunities, uh, opportunities, and just keep uh, making the best of them. Next is Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports. Hey Cam, uh, you and Chris combined through the opening of the season have 60 assists and only only 10 turnovers. For, for both you and Chris, what do you attribute that level of? Um, effectiveness, I would say, uh, playing point guard? Uh, I mean, I just say, man, just constantly getting us getting us in our sets and just making the right reads. Uh, just trying to take care of the ball is the biggest thing. Uh, we try to limit our turnovers as much as possible. Uh, but, I mean, it's, 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 it's really contribute to the guys on our team. Uh, they, they really help us uh, being in the right spot at the right times and uh, just making it easy for us on the court. And to follow up on that, Cam, you saw it in the bubble a bit, but when point five is really moving and, and you make that first pass of the set, it's going to be flying around a bit and you could get it back really quickly. How much does that help your confidence as a point guard to know when you move it, it's going to keep moving? Uh, it helps a lot. Uh, it, just, it just shows that, like, you don't have to get it out, out of the first option. And, like, we, we work on that a lot. Like you said, the point five mentality, like, man, the ball definitely comes back around and you get those opportunities for catch and shoot opportunities and attacking the gap, trying to get to the rim. Uh, but like you said, it definitely does build confidence to know that the ball can make it back to you. But, you know, we got really good scores on this team. So sometimes, man, the second option is money. The third option may be money. But the fourth option, like you said, could always come back around and we can get the opportunity to make a play uh, toward the end of the shot clock. Oh, you're muted, Paul. Next is Brendan Clean with Bright Side of the Sun, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Cam, I'm just curious. Like, obviously, you had a little bit of uh, continuity coming from the bubble, right? Having played with some of these guys and, and in this system. But it just feels like watching you guys that you're one of the, I mean, as the point guard, I guess it makes sense. But you're one of the guys who seems to have the best handle on this offense uh, with, with the, the first four games here. Was there something you did in terms of, uh, you know, someone you watch film with, something you did on your own, a, a moment that you felt like it really clicked for you to, to, to get kind of gelled with this offense and kind of what was being asked of you as the kind of initiator of it? Uh, the, that's funny you ask. Uh, when, when we were in the bubble, um, I know I was trying to get up to speed. And, uh, man, late night we had little shooting times. And uh, I, didn't, I really didn't want to shoot. I just wanted to run the plays, uh, just – try to learn all the plays as many as I can because I knew I was going to get opportunity out there on the court. Uh, so I ran a lot of plays with the coaches, uh, try to uh, find out more options. And then once the season started um, here back in Phoenix, I watched a lot of film with Willie Green. And um, we just been looking at all different options as well, getting into our offense, when and get into the offense, uh, who's on the court. And uh, I mean, he's been helping me out a lot, uh, just watching a lot of film. Always, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm watching CP, uh, just learning, just learning, constantly learning, and uh, just try to be better every day with the offense. Next is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. 
I wanted to follow that up, uh, Cameron. Uh, I find it interesting, you know, learning offense. I mean, it, it it looks like when you guys are running it, okay, this you know this looks like they they obviously know what they're doing. But I'm assuming that it's a lot more difficult to pick it up than it is to actually execute it. But I could be totally wrong. So I guess what I'm asking is, what are the challenges of picking up the offense and then going out and executing it? Uh, when the other team is, you know, in some ways of game plan for it? Uh, I mean, it's tough, uh, but we a uh, big time team on running our stuff. Um, I mean, you can take options one, two away, but uh, we, we we got a lot of different guys who could get into the paint. So it's, it's all about the third and fourth option sometimes. Uh, like I said before, it's really not about the option one and option two all the time, but it's about the um, endurance of the offense to, to keep the offense moving and to uh, get some toward the end of the shot clock or get some at the beginning of the shot clock. But, you know, I feel like our offense got a lot of endurance. Um, you know, we sometimes use the whole shot clock. Sometimes we don't, uh, but it's just, it just matters how the game's going and how the pace is. Okay. And to follow up, um, having a voice out there, um, when you obviously joined the team, they were still figuring you out and you were figuring them out. How much more confident are you now and be able to, hey, look, be here, be there, do this, do that? How much has that grown um, in, you know, in your time there now? Uh, it's, it's, it's grown a lot. And um, it, it, it has it really came from knowing the offense more, learning the offense more, and being able to tell a guy to, man, we, we need to get in this spot and we can run this play right now to get you a shot. And um, like, I feel like that's how I built, built the trust with the team really going to the strength of all our guys, uh, find plays, uh, find ways to have uh, the other guys productive more so than just me, uh, getting other guys the ball in the spots that they can contribute. And uh, I just try my best to do that every time. Um, and I feel like the trust come with that, but also the trust come from, man, playing defense, getting stops and them uh, believing you like, man, if, if, even if we do take this shot, I know we got an opportunity to get it right back. Uh, because all, all five of us is going to come out and play D. So I feel like the trust is built within on, on both on and off the court. And uh, like I said, man, in the bubble, we were we were with each other all day. Uh, so I felt like I built a lot of trust then and built a lot of relationships. Uh, but like I said now, man, just calling plays for these guys and getting them in their spots and making sure they can contribute and get them the opportunity, the good opportunities uh, that they can make the most of in their positions. How was that box out of uh, Zion? It was, it was a tough box out, man. I just, I just, I just try to do my job. Uh, <laughs> that was, that was, that was, that was what I had to do on that possession. So if I didn't get the rebound, it was all good. My job was just not to allow him to get it. So you're a braver man than, than I am. That's no doubt about that. <laughs> Thanks, Cam. No problem. <laughs>